So, ladies and gents, on to, uh, I tell you what, the world famous Mikhail Plot, eh? Should we go with that one? <laughs> yeah, that, that, that the Mayo Massive. That, that sounds good to me. Yeah, <laughs> we'll have that one, shall we? So, like I say, we're on the Mayo Plot here at Grassland 2022. I'm with Mr. Kieran Hughes, and Kieran is going to talk us through, well, the brand new V8 950, Be 950 Belt Bailey from yeah. Mikhail. So, Kieran, take it away. I mean, first of all, V8 kind of. Where is it sort of sitting in the family? Is this a new additional model or does it, or does it replace anything? Or uh, It's a new model as such, however. We had a lot of customers wanting the six foot bale. Yeah. Um, we always have the V6 750, which does the five foot six bale. Yeah. From two foot six up to five foot six. And then uh, we had the V6 740, which is a non chopper baler. Right. Uh, then we had a few customers who were asking for the six foot bale. So uh, this is, there is similarities on the machine, the same as what the V6 750. But of course, it goes up to a six foot bale. Yeah. Um, we had to uh, put in have your bearings in certain places, have your rollers as well. Because when you go up into that bigger bale, there's some pressure there, isn't there? Exactly. Yeah. A lot more weight, a lot more pressure. Uh, it's surprising how much more grass or straw or hay is in that particular bale. That last you know? bit. Yeah, that last <laughs> bit. Exactly. It, yeah. Exactly. So, so there was a few rollers, bearings, chains, and stuff like that we had to change. Yeah. Uh, the front end of the baler would be the same as the V6 750. Yeah. There is a lot of smart similarities now on the rollers and the bearings in the v6 750 and these as well but of course she's got the bigger tension arm on it because you're making a bigger bale uh the bigger bearings on the tension arm as well yeah um again which is coming from the v6 750 which has been out now for the last three or four years you have the hydraulic motor which is a silver thing up in the top here uh which is tensioning and stretching the knit so the hydraulic motor does two things it actually tensions the knit but what it also does is acts like a brake so it's a simpler system than having a disc or anything like that. All so, right. So when that knife goes in, it stops the roll of knit uh, dead. Yeah. That's where the key in that job is. You still, of course, uh, below the knit, you have the movable roller. So if you're ever going after a rotary combine or anything like that, as you're bailing, there's a gap between the belts. Any of the straw that gets through the belts can fall down into the rotor and back into the chamber, brings it around the All system. Right, got you. So when the knit is about to feed in, the roller, of course, moves to the back of the machine. Typical McHale idea as well, always to have your chains as well. Your main drive chain, of course, uh, is each. You don't do things by halves, do no, you? Well, no. Like, the problem is, is that with these balers as well, we're finding bigger horsepower, bigger tractors. Yeah. So again, your bearings and the rollers in the chamber on this side is a double race bearing. Um, and on the far side, it's a single race bearing. So again, it can take, on this side, they can take a lot more weight. The far side is the same weight, yeah. you know. Just because, again, we're going up to that six foot. So I see, you got more pressure, more, more pressure. horsepower, more pressure. Yeah. I'll the belts, it. again, we have to do the same thing. We have to web the belts as well. So your belts are, they're five plied, but they're five plied webbed. So they're not just going what we call the circle way. They're also going the left and right to give it more strength. All right. Because our belts are wide belts as well. Yeah. So give it a bit more strength. You see, sports. you go for the the three belt idea what's the what's kind of the sort the of reason behind that the reason for the three belts or that is is that the wider the belt the stronger the belt um and uh that's the reason for it the reason the reason for it as well is the less gaps as well yeah so the less stuff that wraps around rollers or that in the chamber especially if you're bailing like what we're bailing today very very wet uh sticky sugary grass yeah uh so that's the idea off it as such or whatever like you know uh, this particular machine has hydraulic brakes on it uh, uh so the big wheels on it as standard crop roller, typical McHale idea, uh, like have it full spec, very, very little extras on it. You can get camless as well. This is a cam track pickup on this. All right, so you do either or. Do you we guys? do either one, exactly. Because yeah. yeah. so, you see a lot of baler manufacturers or forage wagon guys or whatever, they're either in one camp or the other. They're either camless or cam track. Exactly. And they never mix the two, but you guys have gone, well, actually, yeah. what, whatever you, what do you want? Yeah, yeah. and we're giving them the option there because some people like cam track and they like that, they usually stay with it but we get, we ridden down the route of the camless, uh, but the camless is a six time bar. The cam track, of course, is a five time bar. Yeah. The new thing what we did is where the white strip is there, um, that can actually move and also where the drop down floor. So as the rotor is feeding the grass or the straw, yeah. in, the floor can move down to allow the stuff uh, and, and that material to be constantly easier. moves, does it? So constantly. Yeah. All it is is a very simple system is on rubber buffers. Yeah. So on a treaded bar and on a linkage system. And as the rotor is feeding the stuff in, uh, the floor is moving down. Um, which is a very system. There's no rams yeah. on it or anything like that. It's just, just literally a rubber buffer. It's a bit hard to see it, but that's what that red thing ah, in, that, just in, there, yeah, in yeah. there. So it allows the floor to flex. Right. Uh, it, 
that is the drop down floor in the down position there now. Yeah, I can see um, the there, so, yeah. so if you block it, all you do is you, you press the button in the cab and you drop the floor down, but on your PTO, the lump goes in. Yeah, and with yeah. that rubber buffer, how much? You'll have, will... you'll have about 25 to 30 mil of a give yeah. on it, depending on how big the swarts are. Because we're getting a lot of lads now, even ourselves, <coughs> the rakes are getting bigger. When the rakes are getting bigger, the swarts, of course, are getting bigger. Yeah. Um, like today here now, the crop is very, very actually heavy, like, you know. Um, so what we're doing is we're building the, uh, the stuff, to, like the machines to take that. Yeah. Because you get, sometimes you get a fellow that wants a bailer that has a, uh, a big rake and that's the idea of it. So, um, so, but again, like when you do do these things, you have to build everything to suit that as well. That's it, you can't just change one bit of it. You've got to scale up the whole lot. Yeah. yeah. The other thing as well we have on, on this particular bailer, the customers ask for it as well, is it's got the new type indicators to tell you which way to drive. It's a, a load cells that's on it, which is on the pin. So as the grass goes in on this side of the chamber, it puts pressure on the latch on this side and it tells you to drive the other way. So oh, uh, God, yeah, yeah, just... years ago, everybody worked on a sensor, but usually when the sensor said to drive left or right, depending on the swart you're on, it's always a little bit late. Yeah. It's the most quickest and accurate way to do that. So it's, it's a very simple system. It's just on a load cell. So as the pressure comes on the latch, it tells you to drive the left-hand side or the right-hand side. Uh, we did put the two springs in the back door as well for the beginning of the bail over of the one spring, uh, just again to put that bit more pressure uh, in the chamber at the beginning of the veil. Yeah. And Tibbin McHale, you can do everything from the cab. You can change your inner core density. You can change your inner core diameter. You can change your outer denser, density, your outer diameter. Uh, you can even, uh, of course, your bail size as well, uh, all from the cab. So you can do from a two foot six all the way up to six foot, uh, all done from the cab. Typically, again, McHale, double drive on it as well, which is there's a roller up here and there's a roller here. So the belt goes around and back up. So the more contact of the belt or belts going around the roller, uh, you don't get the slippage. So again, like if you're like we're bailing with the V6750 there today, uh, the belts just kept on going even though the grass is wet and it was raining and so that's on. It, yeah, uh, yeah. So that's the idea of the double drive. But again, typically McHale uh, have it as standard, uh, even though some people on the east side would probably would need this, the double drive. But if on the west side of the middle of the country, they will need the double drive. If they're bailing in the rain, I know you're not supposed to be doing it, but. But, you know, sometimes you just can't help it, can you? <laughs> exactly, 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 yeah. exactly. And also what we did as well was we increased, when you go from the old system, which is a four tire bar on the cam track to a five tire bar, you have to increase your slip clutch as well. So you're gone from 700 uh, Newtons to 900. Yeah. And also when you go to a bigger bail as well, you have to increase the slip clutch on your PTO shaft as well. So, so the slip clutch is, of course, is in there, um, and that's gone from 2200 newtons up to 24. Right. So, so the slip clutch is, is increased, um, and it's amazing when you how many things you have to actually change when you go. I was going to say because it's it's not just a bigger machine, it's a simple bigger machine. You've literally gone through the machine, haven't you? Yeah, you have to yeah. go through it, and you you know when you do something like this, you have to change at least 20 or maybe even 25 things yeah. to suit that pressure because that's an awful lot more uh, grass in that outer part of the bale, especially when the bigger the bale gets or whatever, like, you know? So that's it. Right. Spot on. Kieran, how's ever? Thank you. Like that? No, no problem at all. Thank you very that. much. Perfect. Thank you. Well, look who it is, ladies and gents. It is it's Mr. James Hudson again. Yeah. Off of that, the famous J.F. Yeah. company. How are we? Good, yeah. Yeah, you survived yeah. Lamar, all right? Yes, yeah. yeah, got through that. That's it, and now we're yeah. at uh, Scott Grass. Yeah, yeah, something came round, didn't Just it? Just a little ride out for you. <laughs> yeah. So today, you might say you brought out uh, a variety of your compact front boxes. Yes. Uh, yeah. Some that don't really look like a box as well. No, no, so, no. I mean, just talk us through them, because we've got a few of them lined up here, yeah. and. They are on JCB tractors on yep. the crown stand, so yep. I mean, talk about product placement. Yeah. Hey? Hey, look. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So what's this one? What we've got so there? Crop press roller with a twine rack. So basically, balls and strings are on there to give you a bit more capacity. Yeah. Uh, doing a good job today. It's yeah. on the you've got a big back bayer on the back of it, so That's yeah, it just so. helps with them. Um, there it is. Squashing it for that there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Helps with getting the more even crop flow into the balers. Yeah. And uh, obviously, like in. In a big straw swath, it'll stop it catching on the bottom of the tractor as well. So you can have a box on that if you wanted. Yeah. 
Um, yeah, it can basically make it. Make so it, it can do away with them, but add the box. Yeah, yeah. On top. And in fairness, that's what it had on it at Lammer. It had a box on it. So yeah, if we move down here, squeeze in here somewhere. So yeah. this is kind of what we saw when we did that. You know, the the product focus. Yeah. You know, all about the compact front boxes that we did with you. Yeah. Uh, quite a while ago. So yeah, this so is a 12 HD. So 1.2 meter wide box, powder coated steel. Mounted on the arms when they're folded up. That's uh, it. This, this is the trick part, isn't it? This yeah, is the trick yeah, bit, yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah. Getting that. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, so it saves that sticking out too far. Not not any lower than the lowest part of the tractor and not higher than the lights. Yeah. So, trying that, to. That yeah. window. <laughs> yeah, the window opportunity. Yeah. So, yeah, it's. Um, yeah. Oh, looking smart on there. Yeah. I've got this one. Another 4,000 and yeah, uh, 4220, I think it is. And a four rotor rake on that. Yeah, and yeah. Uh, well, I've got another one. Yeah. So that's a bit of a bit this of a one off. Is, this is a bit smart. Yeah, yeah. Stainless steel box. Yeah. So we've got that, that one sorted. So what size is that one? That's a one meter wide box. Right. So yeah. On a custom yellow frame. Yeah. Keep it on brand. I see, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you got the memo, did you? <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah, so. Smart. Yeah. And then, yeah, final one, is it? Yeah. This is a wrap and twine holder. So, yeah, basically, it's, well, the good thing about this is when it uh, when it folds, when you lower the arms, when it's on, it, it folds down to about 45 degrees. So You're it makes right. it dead easy to load. So it's more like... Yeah, so you sort of load it from hip height. You're not lifting Yeah, you're not having to go there. like that. And uh, so, yeah, that was the sort of good thing about that one. Right. So, yeah. And do you do various sizes of this one? Yeah, or? so there's six, eight, ten, and twelve roll. Yeah. But also it'll take string. So basically it'll take wrap on the tubes, and then in yeah. the, in the space between the tubes it'll take string. Right. So hence the wrap and twine. Wrap and twine. Indeed. Yeah. It's not a new uh, act out of Brooklyn. <laughs> or like that, no. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> and then yeah, yeah, again that key element which uh, gives it that compactness and uh, yeah. stops it from sticking out. It's like. Because it, you can live with them on the tractor, because they're not stuck out a mile. Yeah. You can just put them on, and you don't have to be dropping them off just to like. Yeah. Help it's a bit more out. a part of it, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Top job. So I mean, you've got quite a bit of an audience here. So have you had much sort of feedback on them today, or? Yeah, it's been lots of chat, interest. Completely unknown. Didn't know what I was going to get, but yeah. yeah, no, there's been quite a bit of interest. So yeah, and uh, there'll be quite a few uh, players have been picked up. So. Yeah. So sure. yeah. Yeah, spot on. Well, that's it. Thank you very much for your time. No, it's it's all good, much. isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> so it's fun. <laughs>
and we have sensors inside the chamber. So once the bale has cleared the bale ramp, it says, okay, I'm good to go again. The yeah. rear door will come back down and the machine will yeah. move off and at to the point, speed. And at the point where it's good to go again, likewise, does it give you, does it say, right, we're good to go it and does. we're about to set off? It's yeah. not a surprise or anything no, like that. No, what you have to do, you have to activate the system. So the only things you do is you have to press the go pedal. Yeah. So on the on the KVT specifically tractor, you just press the go pedal. It then goes back to a preset speed. So the operator is controlling the forward speed of the actual baling. Yeah. But then the baler is controlling it when it slows down, stops and starts. Yeah. There you go. And do you think that's something that might get developed in the future where it is controlling the forward speed? Most or? definitely. You All know, right. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's uh, I think a full automation for, for the whole operation yeah. is what they're looking at. Yeah. Um, it's very difficult, obviously, at the moment to control the crop, the weather, the amount in the row, what yeah. the pressure's wanted in the balers. Well, that's it, because as an operator, you're, you're driving proactively, aren't you? Because you can see the swath Swap. up front that's, that's getting exactly. heavier. You know to back off before you got to that lump. Exactly right. Whereas something that's just taking a load sensing, you've already hit the lump if, and it's reactive then. So yeah. I suppose you've got all that to take into account. And how do you yeah, do how that? How do you do that? Yeah, they're yeah. going to have to come up with a system that reads the swath in front uh, and then relates the speed to that. But yeah, I mean, sensors inside telling you moisture, telling you pressures, sensors on the bale ramp. Uh, and yeah, it's just a very nice operation for yeah. you know the the driver. Um, none of this foot on the clutch, foot on the brakes, backing up. Yeah. You literally just let the baler take over the control systems. And does it have to be with a continuously variable transmission it, tractor? It does. At oh, the KVT in your yes. speak. Yeah. yeah. KVT at the moment and you have to have the plus system baler right. to make it work and the plus system will have the bale ramp sensor the moisture meter yeah. inside um, so yeah with a combination of that and, and the tim on the tractor and the baler and obviously you've got it on the back of a cabot tractor here will yeah. this tim system work with you know another brand of tractor yes yeah yeah it should do as long as their technologies are the same yeah yeah there you go Perfect. Well, Excellent. Matt, thank you very much for that. Thank That's been absolutely spot on. Lovely. Grand. So, we shall continue uh, on the fence stand. I'm now joined by Mr. Dan Woodward, who's going to talk us through, well, I mean, we'll, we'll stroll over to it, the, uh, the T-Goal forage wagon so i mean what have you been up to with this dan because you've you know you've evolved it changed it so electrics have been changed the software's been changed since they were red um, and this is the new tigo uh, 65 vr model so we have two models in this range the vr um, we have a 65 and a 75 um, the 65 and the 75 they sit nicely in between the pr and the xr yeah so they fill that range in between those two models there um, we've now dropped the um, PR70, so this has taken the gap and uh, like filled the gap that right. the 70 did on that side. Okay, there's some nice new features on this. So it's basically the XR body, yeah, um, and it has the PR front end on it. So it has 40 knives in it, giving you a chop length of 37 mil. It's got the new hydraulically driven pickup, as you can see there. So it's a variable speed pickup. All right, yeah. So does that, that help with crop flow and matching yeah. to conditions? So like, that? like if you're in the uh, really short, sticky grass, yeah. uh, like the late grass in November and stuff like that, you can slow the pickup right down so you don't end up with a rolling. Yeah. You're now looking at the Hardox rotor on that. And also you've got the camless pickup. And you can also see here, you've got plastic time bands. All right. On that side. So there's a couple of advantages of the plastic time bands. They're a lot quieter. Um, they're also flat, so you don't get any soil build up on the actual time bands themselves. And also, if you do hit anything with them, yeah. they come back into shape. Right. So it just flex no, back. Yeah, there's That's no it. issues with them at all on that side. All right, got you. And um, like I say, it's, it's camless pickup on yeah, this, is it? Camless yeah. pickup with seven rows of tines. And also, you can have staggered uh, tine rows, as yeah. you can see in this. So oh, cool. Yeah, you sort of stepped them so. about. So, what's. what's uh, what do you gain from stepping them? Uh, the feed into the rotor. It gives you a more even feed into the rotor and it, it, it levels out the lumps that are going into that rotor. Right. You can see we've got one of the widest rotor fingers on the, uh, on the market there. 
So the advantages of these fingers being yeah. wide like this um, is it gives you a minimum gap in between the rotor and the knife. Yeah. So the actual grass can't sweep past the knife. It has to be cut through the yeah. knife. So it gives you a very good chop length. So you get much more moment. of a shearing action rather yes. than a yeah, 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 yeah. bash it round action. Bash it round <laughs> and it can't actually miss the knives at yeah. that then either. So yeah, you get a really good chop length on that side of things. That's it. Um, completely ice of us um, on that. And also one of the uh, big advantages of this, it'll work on the tractor implement management system. Oh, so you, this will so, tell the tractor what to do? Yes, yes right. it will. Um, on that, and that is available on the XR model and the new VR model. Right. Uh, so, so in terms of it telling the tractor what to do, what can it tell it to do? Uh, slow down, speed up, so it'll give you optimal fill. So it obviously relieves the uh, driver um, tiredness during the day. Right. On that side, all he's got to concentrate on steering, basically. Right, so that slow down and speed up command, yep. what's that based on? Is it based on the it's load? Based on the, uh, it's based on the load on the pickup and the sensors on the gearbox. Right. So you've got a sensor on the gearbox and also the load on the pickup. Yeah. So it picks that up, sends a signal to the tractor to either slow down or speed up. So it just gives you an optimum fill on that. Yeah. Um, and that's an optional thing. The other neat feature about this now is there's a reversible floor option. Um, so you can actually use it as a transport wagon as well. Yeah. Um, it's probably a bit more continental. Um, so you can open the back door. If you want to fill it with straw, you can do that. Um, we've also got this optional cable here. So you can have the handset at the back here and you can move your floor yeah. as you're filling the load wagon. So you can put bog yeah. bags in. You can put and then just send them to yeah, the front as you're filling it. Yeah, and send them to the front as you're filling it. All right. So it's quite a neat feature because you can actually have the handset here, so you're actually stood where yeah. somebody's loading it. That's it. They can be the loaded, and you can just be yeah, shunting it along. Yeah, which is a unique feature to us. You just need a wireless version, so yeah, you can do so it from you the loader. You'd be yeah. sorted then, won't you? <laughs> it would. Um, also, there's an option available, so you can have rotors in the back of it. Um, so if you want to fluff it out when it's coming out, um, yeah. if you're driving up and over the clamp, which obviously is not very popular in the UK. Yeah. But yeah, quite a few backing normal. up the clamp now, aren't you? Yes, they yeah. are. And when they're pulling forward, you want the rotors to spread it. Yeah. So that's an option as well. All right. There you go. On that side. Uh, and running gear on this beast? Uh, yep. So you've got uh, BPW axles on that. Um, you can see they're very heavy duty. Uh, the tyre size, got we've got se uh, 750s on those, uh, on this. And we can go up to uh, an 800. So at 800, um, so you can get really wide tyres and yeah. give you a really good footprint. I'm going to say, so, proper flotation going on yeah. there. Yeah, <laughs> and obviously, as you can see, it's quite wet here. So yeah, it's, yeah, we've yeah, got it's the right it out today, that. isn't it? Yep. Uh, you've got the reversing lights on the loader wagon. So even if you do get into the evenings, you do have the optional uh, reversing lights. You can have the high and the low on the yeah. other side. Um, this one hasn't got the optional sharpening, uh, auto sharpen fitted, but we do offer that as an option now and the auto sharpen will sit underneath, so you can carry it uh, sort of on the wagon. Yeah. Right. So it'll sit on the, the axle here, and yeah. sit forward for you. Right. Um, obviously we've got the option for the spare set of knives, so you can carry them to the field with you. Yeah. So you don't have to, you can leave your grinder behind now, so you can definitely uh, sharpen everything on the field uh, on that side. There you go, you got all, is that all individual? Yes. Knife protection as well on yeah. there? Yeah, so it's all individual knife protection. One of the beauties about this is, these springs, as you can see, James, they're not under tension here. Right. You can see the silage was a little bit wet, what we yeah. picked up yesterday. <laughs> um, but there's no, t there's no tension there. They're only under tension when you have a foreign object go through the rotor. Um, <clears throat> so it, it pulls the, the trimatic suspension here. It just pulls it backwards. Yeah. Um, so your springs are not under tension all the time. So it gives you less wear and tear. And obviously it's less cost on the right. loader wagon on that side of things. Um, on that. And they, yeah. will they just spring back into position on yes. their own? Yeah, yeah, they will. You don't yeah. have to drive, you know. No. Once you put the rotor back into back gear, in. yeah. uh, everything like that, they'll just go back in on their own. Right. So there's no problem on that. We've got an integrated gearbox. Um, so it's part of the chassis. I will show you this. Um, so you don't actually have a cast gearbox. Okay. So it's integrated. You've got your input shaft, the intermediate shaft, which drives the pickup if you've got a chain driven pickup. And then you've got your planetary gear here, which is actually sat on the end of the rotor. Right. So this is all part of the chassis. You can see how strong it is. Yeah. There's no flexing in that. Um, and we, we rate this for 450 horsepower. <laughs> 
So on that, so. So you can put the 900 series on it then. You put the 900. Right. You could probably put a 1050 on it yeah, as long yeah. as you're not going if you're for sensible, it. You're sensible. Yeah. So it'll be all right. Yeah. yeah. Um, and then you you have the uh, unique um, bulkhead. So the if you look around the front there, you can see the actual uh, uh, yeah moving moving door on the bulkhead here. So at the moment this is in the loading position. Okay. Um, so it's like a cradle. It catches the grass. And that gives you um, the pressure, which makes the uh, walking floor move backwards. Yeah. The advantage of this is it gives us six cubic meters over the rotor housing. Whereas most of the manufacturers now are, are following what we've done, but obviously this was the market leader in that side of things. Um, and it makes the loader wagon a meter shorter Yeah. Um, for the, the effective same size on that side. When it's emptying, that door will go all the way to the back, so it gives you a really good empty. So there's you you don't end up with a, a grass wall at the yeah, front. It just of it. Yeah, just sends it over it and out it goes on yeah. that side. Um, also, the other massive advantage about this is it's done on hydraulic pressure, which you can set um, to suit your grass conditions and customer conditions, and you can make it so the floor will only move 0.6 of a second, 4.6 of a second, yeah. which gives you a really good fill in the loader wagon. So you don't get any empty space in the loader wagon because if it's got a sensor like a rake in the top of yeah. the door that floor has got to move nearly a foot before uh, the rake drops down and it stops the floor moving oh, of course yeah so you get a really good effective fill yeah, on it that. keeps the pressure up constant yes. all the way yeah. Yeah. the other advantage of the vr over the xr is it's 500 kilograms lighter so obviously if you're using it as a transport wagon that you're that, just getting a bit yeah of... you gain a bit more and obviously fuel savings these days is uh yeah, a massive issue for everybody. So it does make a difference for us on that side. Well, that's it. So, well, there you go. Dan, yeah. thank you very much for that. No and uh, yeah, once we uh, get beyond some of these machine shortages, yes. hopefully in yep. 2022, uh, we'll get around to all this at some point because yep. it is uh, yeah, it's looking smart. Yep. So, and hopefully you'll see it working later as yeah. well. Yeah, so. fingers crossed. Weather we'll plays tricky. Yeah, yeah. 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 Job's going. Cheers, right. Dan. Thank you. Thank you.